So then I tell the students that uh, I will not be able to have the class with all of you. I will only be able to do uh, 10 people to do justice to the class. So I've got to pick 10 people. So I would like uh, all of you to write down in no more than two sentences each your two most pressing personal problems at this time. And, uh, and I will go through them probably quite quickly and pick 10 interesting people. This usually sort of spooks the students, uh, and, and not everyone you know, fills this out. But uh, I, you know, because I, I tell them that if you are selected in this class, the problem you write out now will become the communal property of the class. We will be discussing it. We will be talking about it as a group. And uh, this is kind of scary. And if you're scared by this, maybe you shouldn't be here at all. Uh, maybe you know you have a different notion of what it means to be in the arts. Maybe you have a sort of notion that to be in the arts is like you know standing in front of flash bulbs and walking on a red carpet. Uh, when in fact, the arts is really the dirty laundry business. You know that's what we get paid for. We get paid to hold our dirty laundry up in public and let other people laugh at us. You know, that's where the money is. Uh, that's what entertainment is, and that's what uh, art is. So now you have uh, 10 kids around a table, and you have 10 problems. And everybody reads their problem. You'll, you'll probably notice as I go through this and talking about it that this is really much more like group therapy than it is screenwriting. I think, in fact, we're around, around week six or so, we get into actual writing. Mostly, but mostly we we're just sort of talking about ourselves. And, uh, and of course, by week 10, they're supposed to have a script done, so nobody ever actually gets it done on time. Uh, so every, everyone reads their own problem. And, uh, and, and this is kind of hard for, uh, hard for people, uh, but you know, everyone is sort of always surprised that how mundane their problems are, you know. That you really, you know, we, we all have these, you know, terrible secrets and things that uh, we don't like to uh, tell people and things that we've done, you know. And you, that absolutely sort of mortify you. And then you tell someone about them and they go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. so what, you know. If you're concerned about uh, what people say about you or, or think about you, you'll find another find another way to uh, uh, make your living. And, and in the first place, there's only really one excuse from my point of view to be in the arts in any way, which is if you can't do anything else. The, the purpose then of the uh, second class is to start talking about metaphors because the next assignment is for each of these students to come back the next week with a metaphor for the problem. Now, what is a metaphor? A metaphor is something that stands in for the problem. It's not the problem itself. So if the problem is loneliness, the metaphor is the taxi cab and the taxi cab driver. Uh, it can't be the same thing as the problem. So if your problem is, uh, I, I'm an overweight Jewish girl with, with low self-esteem, the metaphor cannot be an overweight Jewish girl with low self-esteem. <laughs> it has to be something else. Because what you're trying to do, is, in a way, is, um, is get the wires close enough. So here's your problem, and here's your metaphor. And you want to get the wires close enough so the electricity sparks over them. But if they're too close, if they touch each other, there won't be any electricity. And if they're too far apart, the electricity won't spark. So you have to sort of find the taxi cab and the loneliness, and boom, all of a sudden it sparks. And that spark is really uh, your creation. Uh, 
a lot of the great films, I mean, under every film, there is some kind of metaphor anywhere. You can find it. And a lot of great films uh, have simply been built on great metaphors. So if you look at the problems of the soullessness of modern technology, you come up with some of the great metaphors. Frankenstein's monster, the great metaphor. Uh, you know, the metropolis uh, a robot. All of these, you know, Jaws, the, the, the shark, the, the shark outside the beach, you know, as a metaphor for uh, anxiety, you know, uh, the golem. Uh, you know, under all these stories, there's a, there's a deep, strong metaphorical strength. And, uh, and, and you can, if a metaphor is really solid, you can just keep working it. Uh, occupational metaphors are always really nice, and I've always used occupational metaphors because I, I love them. Because in a way, what we end up doing in our lives is somehow some kind of uh, unconscious manifestation of something about ourselves. You know, why do we end up in certain jobs? And so uh, an occupational metaphor is always a, a very good one. And so I've done the tactic. I've done these sort of service industry occupational metaphors, the taxi driver, the drug dealer, the gigolo, and the society walker. Now, but all metaphors don't necessarily need to be occupational. They can also be historical. Uh, you know, there can be a moment in history that sort of uh, reflects the situation that you're you're thinking about, you know. It, you know, what, what I've just been talking about is a problem that you search for a metaphor. Sometimes it works the other way, where you have to find the metaphor, I mean, you have to find the problem inside the metaphor. This, this occurs like when you're adapting a novel, because, you know, it's not merely a, a creative process than saying, I have this problem, now I'm looking for a metaphor. That's, when you do an original script. But what if somebody gives you a book? And then it goes the other way, and you say, wait a second, I now have the metaphor. Now I need the problem. <laughs> uh, in my case, uh, I was asked to write a script on The Last Temptation of Christ. And, um, and that was a big, 600 page book by Nikos Kapuzakis. A lot of different scripts in that book. And I had to find the one that meant something to me. And so part of the challenge of adapting the book wasn't just how do I condense this book, but how do I find something inside this book that really means a lot to me. And in that case, I found this metaphor of the man who was being called by God who didn't want to be called. And, and, and the first thing that, the image that came to mind is a migraine headache, that God is a migraine. And the first shot of the movie, Jesus is laying on this hill and he has this horrible headache. And the headache is God. And God wants him. And, he, and he's being called. And, um, and so I used Christ as my metaphor for being called, uh, the, the, the notion of, of spiritual awareness. Uh, one of the reasons that film was so controversial was the fact that I did use a religious figure, uh, uh, a, a deity in fact, Jesus Christ as a metaphor. And, uh, and a lot of Christians were very upset by that. <laughs>